The evidence is Biden is up to his neck in Hunter's business dealings. There's a new, another news story this week. Again, we're told that they're on the verge of making decisions about Hunter Biden, whether they're going to be prosecuting Hunter Biden. It's, it's, it's like some sort of bureaucratic hamlet to be or not to be in terms of prosecuting Hunter Biden. I mean, who are they kidding? I mean, is it a complicated tax case if indeed that's the low rent case they want to pursue? Is it a complicated gun form case if that's indeed the low rent case they want to pursue? Come on. The real complication of prosecuting Hunter is they really can't do it in a serious way without implicating Joe Biden. No conspiracy claim against Hunter? You know, we're told it's all going to be focused on taxes and, and this gun form issue. No conspiracy? No Foreign Agent Registration Act? The gravest sin in American history, we're told, when the uh, Obama administration and the deep state started uh, to criminally enforce it, practically speaking, for the first time in history? Money laundering? Was by you know the evidence is Biden is up to his neck in Hunter's business dealings as a beneficiary and a partner. So surprise, surprise, the Biden Justice Department wants to investigate whether Hunter paid all of his taxes. Spare us. So once again, Judicial Watch is doing a more comprehensive investigation. It looks like into the corruption around Hunter Biden then, the Justice Department. Of course, the corruption continues. You know, we had told you this uh, about this lawsuit, or at least I think I had, uh, where we sued the Secret Service for their alleged intervention in a Hunter Biden's gun scandal. So his girlfriend threw a gun into a dumpster and they had to retrieve it and they went to the gun store. Allegedly, the Secret Service showed up to basically vacuum up the records. <laughs> That's the allegation, right? Let me read the political report. I mean, I'm describing it in a fun way, but for the record, this is what Politico described it as. The Blaze reported in October 2018, Hunter Biden's handgun was taken by Haley Biden, the widow of then presidential nominee Joe Biden's son, Bo. So remember, Hunter supposedly was having a, a, a fling with his brother's widow. And, uh, and then in 2021, Politico reported that Haley took Hunter's gun and threw it in a trash can behind a grocery store, only to return later to find it gone. Delaware police began investigating, concerned that the trash can was across from a high school and that the missing gun could be used as a crime according to law enforcement officials, and a copy of the police report obtained by Politico. So Politico went up and got the politi police report. Surprising, some journalism from the left media. But a curious thing happened at the time. The Secret Service agents approached the owner of the store where Hunter brought, bought the gun and asked to take the paperwork involving the sale, according to two people, one of whom has first-hand knowledge of the episode and the other was briefed by a Secret Service agent after the fact. Well. What was that? What was going on there? I don't think Hunter was in 2021 protected by the Secret Service. My understanding is he had given up Secret Service protection in the middle of Biden's second term or the Obama administration's second term. And I don't even think he probably would have gotten it even if um, the vice president was getting it at the time. I don't know if the children still get it after they leave office. Maybe they do. But either way, the job of the Secret Service is to provide protection, right? It's not to go and hunt down gun records, obviously, here to help Hunter avoid scandal. And so they've been sketchy about whether such records exist. And so this is where Judicial Watch has asked for the records. They gave us the, um, the runaround. We sued in federal court. Again, this is our law enforcement agency refusing to abide by federal law. I think that's a big deal. Do you think it's a big deal? I think it's a big deal. And they gave us, uh, I think, three different answers about whether they have records.
Let me say, I'm going to be specific here. The Secret Service initially responded to Judicial Watch's FOIA request on April 2nd, 2021, and stated that it located potentially responsive records and would process them in accordance with FOIA. Then, on October 13th, 2022, the Secret Service said that the April 2021 response was sent in error, and then it did not have any records responsive to the FOIA request. So the first two answers were, oh, we have records, and of course they didn't give us any, and then they said, well, you know, we had um, sent you some, uh, that letter we sent you that said we have records, we actually don't. But then on November 10th, 2022, so this is just two months ago, the Secret Service informed the district court, so we're in court at this point, that it has run supplemental searches and lo and behold, has found 100 records totaling over 400 pages potentially responsive to our request. Now, supposedly they're going to complete its initial processing of all potentially responsive requests by January 9th. It's past January 9th. I haven't heard anything, but it doesn't mean something hasn't been sent and hasn't percolated to me yet. And send records out for any necessary consultations. Oh, well, there you go. I should have kept reading. So when they say they need to send the records out for necessary consultations, that means they need to delay the response to the records, requests that we have. So as we note in the release, the Secret Service's changing story on records raises additional questions about its role in the Hunter Biden gun incident. One thing is clear though, Judicial Watch's persistence means the public may get records that the Secret Service had suggested didn't exist. So if we hadn't said, give us the records and we don't believe your response is, we're, uh, we're going to go to federal court. And that's what we did. And lo and behold, oh, they have records. So what do you draw? What conclusions do you draw from this? We caught them in a cover-up. To protect Joe and to protect Hunter Biden, not from the threats of security that they're supposed to, but the threats of political scandal. And that's not what the Secret Service is supposed to do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.